So now that we've done all this, we can actually do an exercise called comparative statics. And this is one of the reasons why we build these economic models in the first place. A comparative statics is when you examine how endogenous variables, those are the ones that we have to find using our, you know, like our, our model, how do those ones change when the exogenous variables change, okay? So we have here, we know that the solution for the short run profit maximization problem is gonna give us labor and it's gonna be some function of the price, the wage rate, and the capital rent, uh, the capital stock. If I don't tell you what the function looks like, you can still say that the price times the marginal product of labor is going to be equal to the wage rate. We, we know that's true. And we can assume that the marginal product of labor is diminishing. We're gonna assume that those conditions hold. And it turns out just those two things on their own are enough for us to already do a little bit of comparative statics. So what we're gonna graph here is how does, for example, the demand for labor this L up here, how does it change when we change each of these exogenous variables? So we can do the, we can change price. Let me get a little more room. There we go. We can change the wage rate and we can change the capital stock. And in each case, on the vertical axis, we'll have the demand for labor that the firm has, okay? So, let's think through each of these, okay? Let's start with the middle here. This is kind of the most easy to imagine. What happens if the wage rate goes up, okay? If the wage rate goes up, then we need the left-hand side of this to also go up, okay? How do we increase the left-hand side? Well, remember, the price is given to us. We're not going to change that. The production function is given to us. But if the marginal product of labor is diminishing, that means that when you increase labor, the marginal product of labor goes down. However, if you decrease labor, the marginal product of labor is going to do the opposite and go up. Okay? So if we raise the wage rate, that means that we want to also raise the marginal product of labor and the only way to do that is to drop labor, okay? So if the wage rate goes up, the amount of labor has to go down, okay? We end up with uh, something that looks like, I should have drawn it this way. If you raise the wage rate, because it's on the horizontal axis, this thing goes down. And we get some kind of function like this. What is this telling us? Well, we've proved something that's kind of intuitively plausible, that if you have a higher wage rate, you're going to have a lower demand for labor, okay? In this model, where everything else is given. We've got a negative, like you raise the wage rate, you're gonna demand less labor. And that comes straight out of these assumptions here, all right? Next one, what happens if you raise the price? If you raise the price, and you only raise the price, let's delete this here. If you raise the price, but the wage rate is fixed, that means that we need the marginal product of labor to go down to offset it, the increase in the price. Otherwise, if it stays the same and the price rises, then we're gonna be in a situation where the left-hand side is greater than W, and we need it to be equal to W. So if you have to reduce the marginal product of labor, and the marginal product of labor is diminishing, that means you need more labor, okay? So that means if you increase the price, you need to also increase the labor. And so you end up with a relationship like this. Again, we've kind of uncovered a intuitively plausible story. If the output goes up, okay, so if you have, uh, 
uh, not if the output goes up, if the price of output goes up, you're going to demand more workers, okay? So, for example, if the price of, you know, if suddenly you're selling something that the price doubles, you want to capture some of that, you hire more workers to make it easier for you to get some of that profit, okay? For you to you increase your sales. And the argument here is that, you know, since the value of each worker has gone up, you hire another worker and so on. Where, again, the left-hand side has increased, and so we would want to hire more laborers, okay? As we hire more laborers, that pulls the marginal product of labor back down until we get to the point where it's equal again. So if the if we add capital and that increases the marginal product of labor, then labor demand actually goes up, okay? Okay, and this occurs if these guys are complements, which we typically assume is the case for high skilled labor. So why do we think that? Like high skilled labor is the kind of labor that can repair machines, pilot machines, work with machines, the kinds of people who can use tools and machinery to be more productive than they would normally be if they didn't have it, okay? We could also though assume the opposite. Suppose that K lowers the marginal product of labor. This can occur if uh, the goods are substitutes, okay? If you no longer, like, if basically they crowd out and you don't need these other guys. If that's the case, then basically the opposite story holds, all right? If the marginal product of labor has gone down, that means that that means that the left-hand side here is now less than the wage rate. It's gone down. It used to be equal. And that means that if this thing has gone down, we need to lay off some workers because they cost too much relative to their productivity. And as we lay them off, the marginal product of labor rises back up until these things are equal again. So in that case, we're here. If the marginal product of labor falls when K bar goes up. And we typically think that this is for low skilled labor who can be replaced and can't work effectively with this stuff. Okay, so you need one or the other, but they can't really combine their inputs. So we can see that this, this is a comparative statics exercise. We can see how the demand for labor is going to be affected by these exogenous variables. In this case, the price, the wage rate, and the amount of capital that the firm has.